Hi, this is Jose Luis and welcome to the new video on the series Intro to Parametric Modeling. In this video, we're coming from the previous one in which I explain what data trees are in Grasshopper and I explain, I define some of the terms that we use to refer to the elements and the structure of a data tree, namely the data tree being the whole uh, the whole structure of the data then divided into branches, each one of them with their paths, and then all the items that are inside of the lists that are contained inside of branches, and their index numbers that we use to refer to the positions of the items in their lists. So this was useful to set down the ground terms that we're going to be using to refer to these elements. But then in this video, what I would like to show you is the most basic operations that we can do on at the level of data trees to change the structure of the data inside of a tree. And this is because, as I said in previous videos, 90% of the problems that you're going to run into Grasshopper, for example, when it's not doing when, what you expect, are probably going to be related to how data is handled and how data is matched. And from that 90%, I assure you that 75% of those are going to be solved by either one of the two operations that I'm about to explain right now in this video. But before I get into that, what I would like to do for the sake of helping us understand what's going on is that just I would like to plot here on the Rhino viewport the index numbers of the points that I have inside of the, this data structure. The way I can do that is using a component that is inside of the display tab. And if I go to vector, I can see that there's a component called point list. What this does is that when connected to a data tree of points, it plots, it displays on the viewport their index number. It's just that right now it's super, super small because uh, this default size is empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in here a slider with a value of 10. And this is a little too big, but I'm just going to reduce this a little bit. And now you can see that I have this really nice display of index numbers, also colored homogeneously by branch. So I'm not sure if the black branch is the first one or the last one, but uh, all the points, all the numbers with the same color are the same branch, which is really, really nice. So this is going to help me a lot understand what operations I'm going to be doing on this data tree. All right. So let's take a look at operations that we can perform to change the structure of a data tree. Remember, none of the operations that we're going to learn today in this video change any of the data whatsoever. The points are going to be the same. And if these were numbers, the numbers would be the same. The only thing that we're going to do is that we're going to rearrange and reshape how the tree that contains all those items is going to look like. And I will make a case in the next video about why this makes sense and why this is interesting. So in data structures in Grasshopper, we have two main operations that we can do at the tree level. And in further videos down this playlist, I will teach you other operations that we can do just at the list level. But these ones are going to change the structure of the whole tree. And the first one that I would like to talk about is the one of the most important ones, which is called flatten. Okay, what does that mean? If I go to the tree tab here, to the sets tab, you can see that I have a bunch of components that work with data, data. And if I go to the tree category, you can see that I have a lot of components that also change the structure of a, of a data tree. Data. So I'm going to drop the very one here that is called flatten tree. And you can see that the icon is kind of a um, a tree trunk that has been chopped down, all right, which is very indicative of what this operation does. What flattening a data tree does is that it basically removes all the tree information, all the branch information, it cuts down all the complexity of the data structure, and it leaves the data structure in the simplest form possible, 
which is one branch with the simplest name possible, which is zero, and then all the items one after the other together after that list in one single list. So for example, let's see how that looks like. I'm going to take that data and I'm going to flatten that data tree. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste this panel and paste another flattened and paste the flattened data right next door. So what we can see is that after the flattening operation, the data is exactly the same. All the points are the same points. They have not changed in three dimensional space. The only thing that has happened is that I have removed all the branches and blah, 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 blah. And now I only have one branch with the number zero on it, the simplest possible branch ever. And then all the elements are now contained in that branch in one single list. And respecting the order in which there were in the original data tree, but they have new index numbers because remember the index number always has to start at zero and has to be correlative, sequential, one after the other. So now the index number of these points are from zero to 14 because I have 15 elements. So flattening removes all the complexity of a data tree and creates the simplest data tree that we can have which is one tree, one list with all the elements one after the other in a branch called zero. And if I actually want to see what that looks like in a with these indicators, what I can what I can do now is I can plug in the the flattened tree to the point list visualizer. And you can see that now I don't have three branches anymore. Now I have only one black branch of points and all the index numbers go from one 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 10, 14. So this is the order now in which my points are contained inside of this particular data tree. This is still a data tree. It's just the simplest possible one. All right. Um, so yes, so that is flattening data trees. Now let's take a look at the other operation that is extremely, extremely important and fundamental to data tree manipulation, which is going to be an operation called graft. Okay. Graft in English means like injecting new branches inside of a tree. And if I go to my sets tab and to my tree category, you can see that I can, I have a component here that is called graft tree and that the icon is kind of like this, um, this icon where like new branches are sprouting out of the tree, which is very indicative also of what this component does. Graft, in a way, we can be thought of as the opposite uh, operation to flattening. So whereas flattening was taking the tree and removing all the complexity and making it the simplest possible tree, Grafting is kind of the opposite. What grafting does is it takes a data tree and then it creates another data tree with more branches, with actually one branch per item, adding a new level to the tree, to the, to the levels of the branches, and therefore creating the most, the most complex data tree that can be created from that original one, aka one with one branch per item. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to go back to point list being my original, uh, my original surface, and I'm going to move, I'm going to, um, how am I going to do this? Uh, I'm just going to move this a little bit out of the way right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in here, graph tree, and then I'm going to copy and paste my panel and then I'm going to plug it in here. So what you can see now is that the result of the grafting operation is that, again, I still have the exact same elements, but you can see that I, this operation has created a new data tree that has one more level of depth. So it has added one more number to the three levels that I had in the original one. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 001, 0, 0, 002, 0, 0, 003, and 0, 0, 004. And then each one of these branches has one of the elements of the original tree. So what has happened is that 
all these elements that were in the branch 0, 0, 0, with indices 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, are now into the branches 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And each one of them is element 0 within that list. And the same goes for the elements that were in branch 0, 0, 1. Now they are element 0, 0, 1, and then 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right? And if I use the previous component that I showed you before, I can click on, I can plug this in here, and I can double click, and you can see that the tree was three branches, and now each one of the branches has exploded into five branches of its own. All right? So, you can see the difference between, uh, and if I plug in the point list, you can see that now what I'm going to get is 15 different branches, so 15 different colors for each one of these, for each one of these elements. And each one of those colors, each one of those items is going to be item number zero inside of its branch. So I have now 15 different lists, each one of them with one item. Okay. All right, so that is in comparison with flattening, which was, um, which was the other operation that just removed all the complexity. So this is a regular tree, this is a grafted tree, and this is a flattened tree. These two operations, flattening and grafting, are going to be the bread and butter of your data tree manipulations inside of Grasshopper. They're like, the MVPs, and they're used like all the time. They're so, so popular that actually, if you right click on the inputs or on the outputs of any component, any regular component, you have the option right away to flatten or to graft whatever is coming into the component. Or for example, you can see how this component is giving us, you can see how this component is giving us a tree that has five elements per branch, I can right click here and choose to flatten the output. And therefore what it gives me has already been pre-flattened. Or I can choose to graft. And instead of that, what I get is a tree that has been pre-grafted from there on. If you ask me, I personally don't like using these shortcuts because if you flatten or if you graft the data that is coming out of a component, then you lose the possibility of using the data without being grafted or branched. So I actually, I'm pretty old school, and I actually like using the components, also because it gives me a visual indication better than the icon, but most importantly, because it gives me the option to always choose whether if I want to work with the data, flat, pre flattened pre graft or whatever. All right? So this is just a particular preference of mine. And now I have a small conceptual question that I want to throw here at you, the, the viewer of this video, or the person who is trying to learn um, algorithmic modeling. In very, very, very general terms, all right? And with many, many exceptions, this is definitely not a rule of thumb, but super, super general. If you were to choose which kind of operation would you like to favor in general in your computational design life? In general, do you want to be a person who grafts data more than flattens data? Or do you think flatten will in general be a better approach than grafting data? In general, what do you think could be a good approach? Again, with many exceptions and always based on the case of what you're doing. Give it a give it a minute thought. Pause this video. Think about it. <laughs> what do you think? Well, again, with many exceptions and with many many uh, with many many depending on the case of what you're doing. But I would like to suggest to you that in general, whenever you can try to avoid flattening. And whenever you can try to favor grafting data, that is probably going to be in your advantage. Why is this the case? Well, when we are beginning, we may feel inclined to like flatten the data all the time because it gives us a data tree that is simple to manipulate. 
it's like very clean, it's just one branch, all the elements one after the other, and it feels like something that is easier to work with. However, just like with the metaphor of trees, if you have a tree that you chop completely, you chop the whole trunk and you just like cut all the complexity and you leave it in the tree trunk, then regrowing or recreating all that complexity in case you may need that complexity, that richness of information farther down the line, it's actually very difficult. But if you are able to maintain yourself at a higher level of information, which is going to be having all the data, but at the same time, having all this rich metadata of numbers and paths of where that data is coming from, that's always going to be super, super useful because simplifying and removing information and cutting out stuff is always going to be super easy to do. You can always flatten down the road. But if you somehow flatten, and then at some point down in your al algorithm, you for, or some, for some reason, you need that richness of information back for an operation, recreating that richness is actually very difficult. And it takes a lot of time, just like having a tree grow. So that's why, in general, it may seem that this, the kind of information is a little daunting at first, but hopefully very soon you will get uh, experience enough to be able to handle data trees that have uh, all this richness of information. And if you keep that richness, then it will very, very likely be useful for you down the road at some point. And again, flattening, and removing complexity is a super sim simple operation that you can always do. But recreating complexity is difficult and tedious. So if you do that for yourself, then you might get into trouble farther down the road. So keep this in mind. But again, there's thousands of examples, there's like tons of exceptions. This, this is not a rule of thumb. And it depends always on the case that you are trying to, that you're trying to do. All right. Well, so this was data tree operations in Grasshopper. This was flattening and grafting as the MVPs, the most valuable players when it comes to data tree manipulation. And now let's take a look at why is this useful? Why do I even want to manipulate the data tree and do these operations? Now let's circle back to the example that we did a couple of videos ago where we were trying to generate this canopy and we were running into the problem that the curves were not being generated the way we wanted them. Let's go back to the video. Let's go back. In the next video, we're going to go back to that example and try to do data manipulation to fix that problem. Thank you very much. This was Jose Luis. If you like this video, consider liking it, consider subscribing to the channel, etc., etc., and see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.